Now, what I wanted to do was sort of show you what we're missing in translation. Um, the reason I wanted to show you this is the, the link between, hopefully oh, you can't see some of the words, but the link between uh, some of the Babylonian creation stories and then the Genesis story are lost in the translation, translation that we get into the English. Um, and you'll have to bear with me, I love Hebrew. And uh, so we're actually gonna go through a few of these translations here just to look at what we're missing when we um, read this in English instead of in the original language. And so we have here, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's a standard beginning that we all know and love and read. Um, well, the problem with that is, let me see if I can unnote this. The problem with that is, this first word here that you've got, barishit, um, it means beginning, and the B up here in the front means in as well, but there's no definite article here. So, what you have here is just in a beginning. So in one of many beginnings, maybe, or in just this particular beginning, God created the heavens, and this right here is the word for heavens. It's Hashemayim. And if we look a little bit lower here, you can see a word that looks very similar, which is Hamayim. Um, and that is the word for waters. And so you can see here, this is just a word for heavenly waters, Hashemayim. And so we can change this to to sky waters. And then the word here for earth, Ha'eretz, it is more commonly used just to mean land, the earth, the land, the ground that you're, that you're um, standing upon. So we've got this different translation here. In the beginning, God created the sky waters and the land. Now, the next sentence here is where it gets really, really interesting, at least for me. Um, we have here, the earth was formless and void, darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. And I'll quickly go through here. This word right here is what they translate as surface. It actually means a physical face. It's the face that you have here. And so this is just face that you've got. And formless and void, um, that's this section, these words right here, tohu vavohu. And it actually means chaos and emptiness. And then you have over the deep, over the surface of the deep. And there is where um, it gets really interesting. The Hebrew word there is tahom, which is the same word tahamet. And so if we retranslate this, you can say, in the beginning, God created the sky waters and the land. And the land was a chaotic emptiness, and darkness was covering the face of Tiamat. And the Spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters, over the face of the waters. And so you can see in our English translations, we're missing these direct connections that we've got um, to the Babylonian stories that we've got. Now let me go ahead and clear this out. And so this is the final translation that I came up with. When God began to divinely transform the sky waters and the land, the land was chaotic emptiness, and darkness was covering the face of chaotic waters. And the wind of God blew upon the face of the waters. Thence God said, let light exist, and light existed. And so you can see with this 
um, closer translation to the original Hebrew, the connections that we've got between this Babylonian creation story um, and the story that the Hebrews were telling. And so let's actually look at the, the Genesis stories here. Um, when we look at Genesis, we see that there are two stories um, in the beginning of Genesis there for the creations. Uh, the first story is the transcendent deity creating things out of that deity's words. And then you have um, the Garden of Eden in which God is walking amongst the people and creating things um, from clay. And so for the first story, we can see it's Genesis 1, excuse me, 2 through 4a. And this was written by the priestly author. And Dr. Malone will be telling us a little bit more uh, about the documentary hypothesis if you're still a little confused on that. But just know that this is what scholars believe was written by the priestly author. Um, the God that's depicted in this story is a transcendent God, a God that is above the universe, above and outside of all of these things. The name for God that's used is Elohim. And an interesting fact about Elohim um, is that it's a plural noun. Uh, it's used in the Bible a lot for the name of God, um, and singular verbs and singular um, adjectives are used with it, but it's also used whenever they talk about the gods, the other um, person's gods, the other uh, deities in the world. And we also have a phrase here, the heavens and the earth, um, as opposed to earth and heaven that you see in the, the other story. And what God does is God creates. The Hebrew word there is bara. And this word, bara, is only used for divine creation. Nowhere else in the Bible does anybody create anything. Um, this word is solely and exclusively used by God. And also in this first story, God speaks things into being. Um, it's a divine fiat where God just declares that things exist and they exist. Well, this is completely different than what we see in the second story, the Genesis 2 story. Um, this is what is believed to be written by the Yahwistic author. The God portrayed there is eminent, walking with the people. He's right there. Um, and the name for God that they use is Yahweh Elohim. You see earth and heaven. And God doesn't create in this um, story. God forms. God forms from the clay and molds things from the clay. Um, never is the word bara used in the second story. Some other interesting facts about the, um, the difference between the two stories. They have completely different orders of creation. In the first story, you have the creation of the cosmos, the heavens and the earth, and all of those things. And then you have the creation of plants, uh, marine animals and birds, land animals, and then humans, both male and female at the same time. Well, in the second story, you have the creation of the cosmos, and then you have creation before any of the plants or any of the other animals. Um, you have creation of a male human, and the purpose of that male human is to uh, basically till the earth, and um, then you have the plants coming about, and then you have land animals and birds, at the same time, and then finally, after um, God, or Adam goes to God, you know, he's lonely, there is a female human that is created. And so you have these two varying different types of cosmologies um, in the two different stories that you've got. So let's actually look at a closer look for the first creation story. Um, what the priestly author is doing here is sort of creating resources to begin with. Because the question you might ask is, if God is so powerful and could just speak things into being, why didn't God just create the universe in one day and be done with it? Well, what the priestly author is doing is sort of setting up um, the various different aspects of the universe that he's aware of. And so the first thing that we have set up are the resources, the things that will be used in the first three days of creation. And so on the first day, light is created. Um, it's not the sun.